you are familiar with OGAT Television in Orange? Me. Yeah, well, this is Mr. Davis, who is in charge of OGAT Television. And uh, everybody will be filmed in their position. Some have been filmed in real life for commercials and things, I know, too, yeah. uh, as this goes on. But this is Government Day for the town of Orange, and these are all students from Amity. And they'll be taking positions starting right with the first selectman right on down. And this is all backed by their teacher, Teacher Marganski here, who can explain a little bit more about what the children are. There you go. We have to be on OGAT. Okay. <laughs> As to what they've been learning in school and what culminates with them spending half a day with us at the town of Orange. And they all look so excited to be in their positions. And uh, everybody's going to be in a... We'll start. Say your name and where you're going to be. I'm Morgan Ferguson, and I'm going to be with the assessor. And I'm Jennifer Delecky, and I'm going to be with you. And I'm Jennifer Bishop, and I'm the visiting nurse director. I'm going to be Shamika, and I'm going to be with the librarian. Okay, speak up. I'm Allison Thomas, and I'm going to be with the building instructor. I'm Cody Peters, and I'm going to be with the town sanitarian. I'm Jenny Ann, and I'm going to be tax collector. I'm Greg DeBarbo, and I'm going to be town engineer. I'm John Jellick, and I'm going to be town clerk. I'm Christina Carabinos, and I'm going to be with the registrar of voters. Okay. And we truly are thrilled to have all of you here. I know there's more actually in the program. I think there's going to be somebody with the police chief today yep. and fire, marshal. fire marshal's office, park and rec mm -hmm. um, department, community services. Community services, yep. Um, police chief, town planning and zoning, judge of probate. Okay. So this is really terrific that we have you all here today. And as temporary employees, Mrs. Goldberg gets sent down to the different departments for the those of you who aren't here with us today, but you're all official employees of the town of Orange for part of the day, so everybody has to put on their town of Orange uh, employee pin. If you just pin it on your collar, lapel, your shirt, your pocket, yours is with that nice gold shirt there. I don't know if it's going to show up. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Cameras don't make you nervous, really, Miss Ferguson. No, they add any time. She's used to that. Yeah. And teacher, thank you very I think much. That you should have that too. And you'll you're so going to learn today what our different officers of the town have to do in their normal operation of business. Some of them on some days are extremely busy and other days they'll have days where it's not too bad. Uh, my days for the last three days have been absolutely crazy and today is no exception. Um, my day started with a phone call from the superintendent of Amity this morning, Dr. John Brady, and then I had to speak with Mr. McGinnis from the Park and Rec Department in regards to uh, purchasing services and bid services for the summer camp for the town. And uh, the next thing that I will be doing is going down to the police department for the swearing in of some new police officers for the town of Orange this morning. Uh, so that I get this much mail every day. Now, those stacks right there on my desk, that's yesterday's mail after it's been sorted, first by my secretary and then by myself. And there's still a stack there, if you put it all together, that will be eight inches deep. Hmm. And that's every single day. There's so much to go through. The legislature hasn't finished with the budgets yet, which will affect all town budgets, especially the town of Orange. The governor proposed the budget, and the legislature is proposing a budget. For the town of Orange, they're a few hundred thousand dollars apart. Um, that few hundred thousand dollars makes a big difference in what the town's people will have to either ante up to pay the difference or if we have to trim areas in the budget where we're just not able to fund um, different uh, programs or departments within the town with there's things that sometimes have to be cut. Uh, so I think at this point it's 10 after 9 and I know that the department heads are waiting for all of you so I think that um, we'll call it a cut, wrap, whatever they do at the moment <laughs> so that we can uh, get everybody to their 
proper department heads. All right? Sounds good. Very good. Thank you for having us Thank today. Thank you. Absolutely. Now, are you going to be around all day, too? Or um, no, we're going to I mean? drop them off, and then we'll be back around noon to pick them all up. Take okay. Off lunch. No fooling around. That's right. <laughs> you know, if, if you need Jen's help after that, by all means. That's it. We'll just fine. keep her, huh? That's fine. That's it. All right. Very good. I'm going. Actually, I'm going to Hartford tomorrow to talk about the train station. You want to go, go to Hartford tomorrow to meet sure. with the meet with the speaker of the house, uh, uh, Jim Amon, and uh, some of those Why people, not? the Senate President Don Williams. That's my day tomorrow afternoon. We're working on the train station for Orange. So, all right. Sounds good. Very good. Thank you very much. All righty. All right, Jen. We'll see you later. Okay. And since it is Government Day today, all department heads get a representative from the Amity Middle School. And the first selectman representative today is Jennifer DeLecky, and she decided to shadow the first selectman today. And Jennifer, why did you decide to shadow the first selectman? Was there any intrigue or question? Why would you want this to follow my position? Well, I've always known who the first selectman is, but I never really knew what their job truly was. So mm -hmm. I was curious about that, and I figured that I'll definitely learn some skills that will be helpful in life, Do organization, you? and other, how to be, you know, responsible, and those sort of things. Good. Very good. I'm thrilled to have you here today, and uh, I hope you uh, do pick up on all the trade secrets that go on that the first selectman has to know and so many people to deal with. All right. Great. Great to have you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Sandra Pearson. I'm the tax collector in the town of Orange. Today's Government Day, and with me today I have Jenny Yan from the Amity Junior High, and we're going to go over some of the activities that the Tax Collector's Office covers. Um, I've asked Jenny to write down a few of the things that she thinks we handle here in the Tax Office, and then I'm going to enlighten her as to some of the other um, procedures we do. And one of the most important things um, I have to start out by telling Jenny is all the tax collectors in the state of Connecticut work under the Connecticut state statutes. Uh, so we have no leeway as far as procedures that take place in this office. Um, so I'm just going to look here and see what Jenny has written down here. And first off, she has collect taxes, and that is basically um, what we do here. The assessor's office determines the assessment of a real estate, personal property, or motor vehicle. and based on the mill rate, it's determined the dollar figure that um, we are to collect. We have no discretion on any of that. Anyone who has any questions is advised to speak to the assessor's office on that. Um, so Jenny is here to decide how much the taxes are. In essence, that is not something that this office does. We are just the collection agency for the town. Uh, and it's important to know that the taxes that the town collects is based on what the Board of Finance determines the town needs to run during each fiscal year. And the calendar year is uh, January to December. Municipalities run on what's called a fiscal year, and that's July 30th to uh, June, July 1st, June 30th of each year. And taxes are collected in arrears. So we're collecting, in July, we will be collecting on what was owned by a person as of October 1st of 2005. So it becomes confusing at times because people will come in and say, well, I sold my motor vehicle in May. And we'll say, well, that's fine, but we're collecting a year in arrears. Um, we work very closely with the assessor's office and the town clerk's office. Personal property um, documentation is handled by the assessor's office. And if a business is new to the town or leaves the town, they need to notify the assessor's office of that because they get taxed on what they have in a business. If it's an office, they get taxed on computers, desks, um, filing cabinets. If they happen to be a restaurant, they get uh, taxed on their machinery, um, stoves, uh, uh, shelves that they store, pots and pans on. Um, Unfortunately, just about everything is taxed, uh, and that's what we use to run the town. Um, data taxes, that's good, and we keep everything forever. Um, all different 
every transaction that goes through our office um, through our software system is recorded annually in a rate book. And this is something we have back from the time taxes were collected. We have them down in the basement stored. Um, and you can look through and I'll look under your last name and I'll show you what your household paid. All this is public information, so anyone can come in. Um, if you have a question on a piece of commercial property, uh, if you want to know what comparable properties to yours are paying in taxes, it's all public information, and we'd be happy to sit down and explain um, and answer any questions you have. We also have a handout that we'd be happy to mail out to anyone who has questions on on the taxes in the town. Um, we have three employees here in the town, myself and I have two assistants. Sally Furco is at tax, co tax collection class today and Lynn Plaskwitz, she attends classes on Tuesdays. Um, I go to continuing education classes because the st statutes are continually changing and we need to keep up with all that. Like I said, all the 169 municipalities in the state of Connecticut work under the same guidelines. Excuse me, Sandy. Yes. Uh, you, I don't know if you know or not, uh, but the children were given a choice of what departments they'd like to be in, and they had to write a paper about it. And Jen wrote a paper about being in the tax department, didn't you, Jen? Oh, I wasn't even aware of that. And Jen, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you wrote on that paper? Well, they asked us why we would like to be tax, like, tax collector, and I just wrote that. Um, um, well, it's an interesting job because um, you pay all your taxes. Like everyone's always talking about taxes and how it helps school and hospitals and everything. And everything we do involves our taxes. And I just wanted to see um, how like they are really done and how um, how they help our town and cities. Okay, and you're right, it is a necessity um, to keep towns and, and cities running. And for the most part, um, taxpayers and residents understand and, and don't have a problem with, with paying the taxes. They understand that it's, it pays our teachers, it pays um, the, to have the plowing of the streets done, the baseball fields um, up kept and all the employees in the town. Um, and like I said, everything is governed by the statute. So we really are just following the rules. We don't make the rules, we just enforce the rules. And we're willing to, if people have um, difficulties, we realize that um, people become ill, they may have lost a job. Um, we're willing to work with people. All we have to do is let us know that there's a, an unfortunate temporary uh, situation and we'll be happy to work out a plan with them. So um, we have the next couple hours with Jenny. Hopefully when she gets older we do hire um, students to come back during collection area. We'd love to see you back here, Jenny. Well thank you, Jen. Thank you. And thank you, Sandy. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. This is the Department of Public Works. I'm Ed Lieberman, the Public Works Director, Town Engineer, and Floodplain Administrator. But I've turned over the job of Town Engineer to, good morning to Greg the Barber. And uh, he's a, ma a man who likes math and he likes building things, so he's going to be a natural for an engineer. I've explained to him that uh, one of the jobs we do here are maintaining buildings, the roads, the drainage. We review all plans for new roads and new, new utilities and that uh, one of the big jobs is to make sure that when properties are developed, that water doesn't run from one property to another without proper uh, drainage considerations. And uh, we do, we do some, our own specifications and layouts for roads when we can, otherwise we hire outside consultants. And we've done several roads in-house. Uh, I was going to tell them that we're putting together specifications for new windows for the uh, cafeteria. We're going to consider hurricane-proof windows because High Plains Community Center, where the uh, cafeteria is located, is going is our main evacuation 
location for people that have to be displaced because of any kind of disaster. Um, I have to work with, I review all, I review all applications for construction, new construction. Uh, even if it's just adding onto a building or putting in a swimming pool, again, to make sure that whatever is put in doesn't cause drainage problems for the neighbors. And this is a result of uh, years of listening to complaints about water running from one property onto another, and it's not right, so we try to avoid it for the future. Regarding the floodplain, any, there, there is uh, an ordinance that tells me what I, I can allow and what I can't allow, and I try to adhere to that. And if people don't agree with my decision, they have a right to go to the uh, Board of Selectmen for a, to rule me. However, if they do, the, then there could be serious consequences. And we, uh, we do modifications to buildings, like here at Town Hall. We uh, changed, we added some office space down the hall that used to be a, a uh, meeting room. We, we installed it with the help of uh, our administrator so that when meetings are held down there and they are photographed, people can hear them very clearly. And the people in the audience can now hear everything that's said, said because of that, that, that audio system. The next job, that we undertake here. We're going to try to increase the space for OGAT down in the room that they're in and over at High Plains in addition to the windows at the community center we have the south wing which has to be completely renovated and that will, plans for that are going to be developed next year and the following year we'll take care of it. They will involve air conditioning, new windows, new ceilings, the floors have already been done. Have other projects. Uh, hopefully, at the transfer station, we want to make some improvements there, which I can handle with putting together the plans and the specs because they're very simple. And we are, we currently have a program for improving roads. Uh, we use a chip sealing method. That's where we put down the t uh, an emulsion and then put the stone down and roll it. And that's only now for minor roads town will have to go into a more permanent type of road construction very shortly because of the road with the chip sealing program doesn't hold up on main roads. Uh, Greg, you have any questions? Any, any? No? Okay. Well, Greg, you're, you're uh, working today with probably one of the busiest guys in this town. He's responsible for everything in this town working. Everything. <laughs> That's a big job. Uh, Greg wrote a report in order to have the opportunity to be with you today. Oh, I didn't know that. And uh, I was just wondering if Greg could tell us a little bit about what was in that report. Um, well, I just wrote about like how I liked math and building things and basically explained like, how I like to learn about how things are built, like bridges, roads, houses, and stuff like that. And I was pretty sure that that's what you did. And that's what well, that's close. We don't build. We don't build bridges. We don't. We don't build houses. But roads, uh, we hire contractors to do it. Um, we uh, maintain the roads, uh, fill the potholes, we seal cracks, uh, and we do put a coating on some of the roads. That, as you know, but our people are mainly in the maintenance. In other words, once it's built, we have to keep it up. If it has to be rebuilt after many years, that's something. That's a specialty. Uh, there is somebody else that's down at the highway department, one of your classmates, and they're being shown the work that they do. And uh, I have uh, 12 people down at highway, three mechanics, and nine outside people. The building, I have uh, a building superintendent who's not here right now, and there are two maintenance people. One is full-time maintenance, the other is a custodian maintenance type. They're very handy. And we try to keep the busy as much work for these roles. Well, Greg DeBarbera, I thank you very much. And Ed Lee Bruin, our town engineer, I thank you very much. Good job. Thank My you. My pleasure. Hi, Ron. Um, this is the Orange Health Department. We have two uh, divisions in the health department. We have the environmental division and we have the medical division. 
The medical division is located in another building. It's uh, referred to as the OVNA. We also have uh, school nurses and we also have a director of health who is Dr. Zelson. Um, this is the environmental division. We take care of environmental health issues. Uh, part of our staff is missing today, Katie. Um, she's our secretary. This is uh, Brian Slagowski. He's a staff member, staff sanitarian. And this is our sanitarian for today, Cody Peters. <laughs> And uh, Cody is learning today uh, what we do in our office. Basically, uh, we're involved with um, inspections and enforcement of the public health code. We um, inspect the, septic system, the installation of septic systems. Um, we inspect restaurants. Brian is in charge of that. Um, and uh, we do many other things that are involved with just general complaints. We're involved with general uh, complaints that has to do with uh, rat infestations, mosquito infestations, trash complaints. Um, we get complaints about the public uh, bathing pools. Um, we inspect uh, convalescent homes. Um, Don't forget daycare centers. Daycare schools. centers. And so basically it's inspections and enforcement of the public health. We also review plan, engineered plans for septic systems. And um, that takes an enormous amount of our work. We review uh, subdivision work for proposed subdivisions in town. Um, that involves a lot of field work. We're mostly, our office consists mostly of our, in, in terms of our duties, um, I would say probably 60% of our work is field work. And the other 40% is administrative type of work. Did uh, Cody tell you that she had to write a report to choose to be in this department and uh, yes as a matter of fact i was going to ask her um like how she got to this point yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's how and you want to explain cody well um my teacher had this um this was an optional thing you know we didn't have to do it but um you know she had to write an essay and whichever um whoever's essay was most convincing and you know the best um, on what they wanted to be would be chosen and then the child would go to their destinations and just find out what, um, you know, their, their certain jobs were there. What do you think you wrote in your essay that uh, made, <laughs> you, that got you the uh, award to, to be here today? Um, I'm actually not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, um, I think just how um, I just uh, phrased some of the um, things that I said, probably. That's what probably got me here. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, Cody, Fred, Brian, I want to thank you very much. Did a good job. You all both have fun. Hopefully, if you have a good day. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Hi, I'm Don McInnes, Director of Parks and Recreation for the Town of Orange, and this is my replacement for the day. This is Kevin Early, 7th grade at Emily Junior High, right? Yep. Want to tell them why you wanted to be Parks and Rec Director for the day? Um, Park and Rec Director was um, the most interesting job to me on the list they gave me, so I wrote an essay about it, did pretty well, and I got picked out of a hat. So we're touring today. I'm going to show Kevin a little bit about what I do and what my department does. And we're touring the parks and town hall, meeting other department heads. We're going to be talking about the problems of parks and challenges and the innovative things that we think we've done and some of the awards that we've gotten and, and meet a lot of interesting people and get out of the classroom for the day, right? Yeah. And uh, so we're excited about that. And uh, I guess next we're going to go down to the soccer park. We've already been to Old Tavern Road Park. We talked about some of the plans for improvements down there for parking and for improvements for safety. But uh, Kevin also has been told a little bit about all the various programs that we have and functions that we provide at the High Plains Community Center, for instance and how we work and how we respond to my boss, which is the first selectman, and that we also have an advisory board, Park and Rec Commission, right? You learned all that? Yep. When people ask you, you'll know, right? Yep. And I can leave in a little while and you can take over. Sound good? Okay. <laughs> but we appreciate the opportunity to talk before everybody today and, and talk a little bit about what Park and Rec in Orange is all about. All right, do you have anything else to add? Nope. Well, thank you both. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much. Kevin, you have a good day today. Bye-bye. Bye now. Hi, um, I'm Mark Brand Casey, uh, your local tax assessor, and I'm here with Morgan Ferguson. Uh, of course, you know Morgan. Her grandfather owns Ferguson's Center Eyes Sports, 
over on Old Tavern. Okay. Right. And we're here on Government Day, and uh, Morgan's here with us this morning to see exactly what we do. Uh, as you know, Morgan, we are responsible for setting the assessments for all properties in town. Now, a lot of people are very uh, confused over the issue of, do we set the taxes? No, we never do. We set the values for all the properties in town. So we just like we would clear that up right yeah, off the bat. Definitely. <laughs> um, and uh, we uh, basically use many computers. And if you told me you like computers, I do like computers. You like them very much. And of course, we are both New York Ranger fans. Definitely. Right. And uh, since the Rangers are out, we're going with the Sabres, correct? Yeah. Very good. So um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I like hockey, obviously. Yes. I like math. Okay. And Cesar seems to do with math. Oh, we do a lot of math. Yes. So, that's fun. Yes. Um, I cool. Good. Oh. Do you skate? I do skate. Oh, my goodness. Four times a week. Four times a week. Saturday morning, four hours. Great NHL hockey player. Uh, probably Chris Drury. Chris Drury. Or Oh, he's very good also. Now, we all know that Chris Drury is Connecticut boy. Steve Alcaz, Is he too? There's Oh, my God. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> my mistake. So, uh, we're pulling for Snow Big Secret, and um, that's about it. We'll see you later. Bye. Well, I don't think we're quite down yet. This young lady wrote a report. She did. That, that allowed her to win the position she's in at the moment. Oh, how come you didn't tell me that? And, that was uh, a good part. I you left it out. I That's okay. It. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll go back on edit that out. Uh, and we'd like to know who wrote on that report. Okay. Morgan, okay. I understand that you wrote a report that gave you this honor to come here. I did. Oh. I like this because I like houses in our town land. Okay. And I like math. I mm -hmm. love to do math. And I thought it would be fun Okey to doke. come to town hall. Well, your wish will come true. Yeah. I hope I don't bore you to death. <laughs> okay. I'll show you our MS system. Uh -huh. We'll show you our models that we use in order to come out with the values. Mm -hmm. We'll show you the end result. Yes. And we'll show you our sales comparisons that we use to try to figure out what things are worth. Okay. And, uh, boy, you'll get some math today, kiddo. I will. <laughs> well, thank you both very much. Yeah. Have a wonderful day. I'm sure she'll learn a lot from you. Well, thank you, Ronnie. Take care. This is Allison Holtz. She is the student building official for the day, and I've explained to her some of the duties that we do. Um, my job is really public safety. We get prints in that people bring. We examine them and make sure that they conform to the Connecticut Building Code. And then we give out permits. We give out a lot of advice. People come in and want to know how to do something. My job is not to design, but they submit the design, and then I make sure that design is in conformance with the Connecticut Building Codes. And then we write permits. In the afternoons, we go out and make inspections, and that's about it. Sounds simple, but pretty complicated. Now maybe Allison wants to say a few words. Um, <laughs> Have you been busy all morning? Yeah, I like running around doing things like signing papers and making copies of permits. Allison wrote an essay in order to get the position she has here today. Maybe you can tell us, Allison, what you wrote in that essay. I, um, I just talked about how I liked helping my dad with his chief. He built the chief fort, and I liked helping him build it and making sure it was safe and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And that I like measuring and math and stuff. Oh. Well, Allison, thank you very much. We appreciate it, Fred. All right. And you have a good day, both of you. Thank you. Enjoy your government day and learn a lot. Alan. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Mary DeVito. I'm one of the registrars for the town of Orange. We have today with us Christina Kerminis, who is our registrar of the day from the Amity Junior High School. Uh, Christina, I was telling you about the moderator's book. This goes to the front of the place of them when they have the voting day. And Carmel and I bring it up to date with payroll, his oath that he swears the people in at 5.15 in the morning, and his, his time's tally sheet for keeping a record of how many people vote every hour so that at the end of the day he has all his records in this book. And Carmel, would you like to say something about the... Well, yes, my name is Carmel Apuso, registrar of voters in the town of Orange. 
and we we'll welcome Christina today. She's quite a student. We enjoy teaching her what we have here. Now this is also the part, the day of the referendum. We're having a referendum May 22nd. The town budget and we're going over what we get ready for the moderators. And as Mary said, the books are all set up, names, addresses, and the moderator book. And in the moderator book is uh, the um, people that are working for the day so that he could check them off and how much they make and the people that set up the machines and we're teaching them how we pay them. We have the time cards here. They fill out the time cards for the day and it all comes back to the registrar's office and both registrars work on the books, get the payroll ready and uh, that's what Christine is working on today. Anyway. Else, Christina, tell us a little about your essay. Oh, um, well, for my essay, I <clears throat> I really picked the registrar voters because I didn't really know what they were doing here, and I was curious. Mm -hmm. So I decided to come, and well, I wanted to see what they did. Did so you pick up on a lot? I mean, did you enjoy? Are you surprised at what you did see? And how many papers we have to fill out? I know, there are a lot of papers. And it's quite a <laughs> system. It isn't just signing you up. Uh, there's a lot of things behind becoming a voter, and people think all we do is check off lists and check off names. No, there's a lot of behind the scenes that the registrars and the assistant registrars do mm -hmm. in order to prepare for the day of voting. You didn't expect this much, did you? No, I didn't expect. Tell them um, what you learned um, that you didn't expect. Well, I learned uh, all, they have to um, punch in the names of the people who have come who sent in their uh, cards to register to be a voter. And so I got to help with that. It was very interesting. And we have to uh, send back the card to the person to um, make sure that they know that they're... Where they uh, vote. Where they're voting. Confirmation. Yeah. Confirmation, yes. Also, you also saw how we take people off of uh, the DMV and how we... A place them on again in a different town, and this mm -hmm. is how we keep track of them through the DMV. You, in turn, sent that letter today. That was another thing you learned. Yeah. So we do keep track of every man. Again, getting back to Christine, she didn't expect to see all these phases that we do to keep our books up to par and our lists up to par. And she has a lot more time and a lot more things to learn here. But by the time we get through with her, she'll become a good registrar. Yes. <laughs> Christine, is there anything else you, did you enjoy being, looking at this? I thought it was very interesting. And one thing you have to know is two registrars have to be unaffiliated. In other words, if you're a re Republican or a Democrat, you can't tell these people what you are because they have to make their own decision as to what they want to be. You try not to. In fact, do not sway them into signing what you want. Mm -hmm. You let them be independent of all the signatures and all the decisions. Yes. So we are unaffiliated as far as being registrars when we're in this office. What we do outside the office is up to us. But in the meantime, you have to know you have to be what you are. Okay. Ladies, I thank you very much. I've got to run on. Okay. But Mary and Carmela and thank Christina, you. thank you so much for your time and telling us what you do. Uh, here in the Red Stars Department. Well, we hope, we hope you enjoyed it. Thank Come you. and vote. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I'm Tammy Costello, and I am Administrative Assistant for the Zoning Department in uh, Orange. And uh, this is John um, Drellick. He's a student at Amity Junior High, and uh, he was interested in learning about zoning. So I just um, I wanted to to tell him what zoning is about. Um, it is the regulated use of land and it was established in Orange in 1937. And municipalities such as Orange are granted all authority that state statutes allow them to have. So we can we can judge and decide on what um, additions and that people can, can build in their homes. And um, did you, I was teaching John about some things. We're looking at the zoning book regulations. Uh, John wrote an essay about becoming zoning enforcement officer for the day. Uh, Want to tell us what you put in, in the essay? Yeah, um, I enjoyed uh, writing the essay to uh, be plan zoning mm -hmm. 
and um, I wrote it, uh, why I would like to be town zoning and how I would like to get this position for town zoning. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, Do you have any questions? So anything that you learned about how to put a pool in, how you have to fill out the form? And yeah, I learned how that mm -hmm. you had to have a building permit mm -hmm. license mm -hmm. in order to build an addition pool or dwelling. Right. That's right. A zoning permit first and then the building. You get department head signatures. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, it looks like you got a busy day ahead of you, John. Yes, we do. And, uh, Pat, if she could. Tammy is the one to teach you. She's, <laughs> she's got a lot of background in this business. Mm -hmm. Yep, enjoy it. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm Meryl Farber. I'm the library director at Case Memorial Library in Orange. And this is Shamika, who is a student at Amity Middle School in Orange. And she is here for Student Government Day. Every year we've been very fortunate. We've had, a, we've had one of the Amity students come and be the librarian for the day. And I know that Shamika had written an essay in order to um, enable her to come here for today. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? <laughs> well, I wrote an essay about how I wanted to be like a librarian because I wanted to volunteer. And so I just wanted to see how things work at the library. That's, that's, that's wonderful. And we have Shamika on a tight schedule. She's, she's been able to visit every department in the library. And we're trying to show her some of the things that the library does besides circulating books and materials. So I think, I think it's been excellent. I also want to mention that Shamika is a volunteer in the summer in the children's department. And that's something we're always interested in. The children's department is right behind us. And also she's a member of Book Cat Cafe, which is an after-school group that, is, um, that takes place at Amity Middle School in Orange. We meet once a month, and teens are given the opportunity to discuss books that they're reading and that they think are outstanding are actually put on the Amity Summer Reading List. So just to let uh, children, students who are going into seventh grade next year, this is a program for seventh and eighth graders, and also you're always welcome to volunteer uh, in the children's library. Thank you. That's really wonderful. Shanika, uh, good luck to you, and, and I hope you get a great deal of knowledge about the library today, and certainly have the right people to help you do that. Good morning. We're here with Michael Knight and Katie. Caitlin Wong. Caitlin Wong. Uh, Caitlin is the fire marshal for the day in the town of Orange. And we're going to do a general inspection on the facility to, uh, to show that uh, Caitlin is really a, a good fire marshal. That's great. Well, Caitlin, I understand you did a, uh, an essay today, or not today, this week, and you won this position. So what did you say? I said that I wanted to be a firefighter when I was little. Yeah. And I thought that this job was interesting. Well, that's great. Well, it looks like you've got a good job at it. Yeah. You've got a good guy to teach it. Orange Public so we're going to inspect the building, are we? Yes, we are. And maybe you could tell me how that's done, what we do. Well, generally we come in and we look at the life safety equipment and make sure that it's operating properly. We check all your exiting um, and emergency lights. We make sure that we have reliable uh, means of egress. Make a basic job of the fire marshal. Uh, why do we have a fire marshal? Uh, why do we have a fire marshal? Well, there are there are issues in, in all towns in the state of Connecticut, and we have, we're statutorily regulated in that we, we are governed by the state of Connecticut. That tells us exactly what statutes that we should follow for fire safety in the event of an emergency. Um, so that um, in the, if you're in a structure of occupancy, we, um, we want to be able to get people out safely um, uh, with uh, as much speed as possible. So your job is to monitor the, the fact that the facilities are there to make that possible. Right. Exit signs, the lights, um, sprinkler systems, um, things of that nature. Great. We're well, going to learn a lot today, Caitlin. Let's uh, yeah. take a walk. All right. Okay, I'm Chief Robert Gagney from the Orange Police Department. Today is uh, May 16th. It's Government Day here in Orange. And we have with us uh, for the day, Christian Traz. Christian is an eighth grader at Amity Junior High School and also present as Assistant Chief Ed Cother. Uh, this was a great day for uh, Christian to be here. He wrote an essay to become Chief for the Day and he wrote the best essay so he was elected as Chief for the Day and it was a good day to be here because we just swore in two brand new officers, Officer Julian Sokich and Officer David Pecorero. And um, Christian was here to witness that and he led us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And that's not something that happens every day, so that was a, a good experience for him. 
and he got to meet several of our officers and get a tour of the building and see what all the different functions uh, of the police department and what's involved. Uh, he spent some time in our records division and in the investigative services unit and in the communications area and he saw how the different units of the department work and what the different duties of all the officers here are. What do you think to add? I had much fun. Yeah? I had great fun and I made two new friends and uh, the Orange Police, now I know why they call the department Orange's Finest. Oh, that's a very good, good term. We'll continue it that way too. Well, thank you very much uh, for introducing your guest and for telling us about the police department. Appreciate your time, all of you, and uh, we'll see you on TV. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have one straggler here that we uh, we kind of missed, and Jen Lou, this nice young lady, has been all day with the with the uh, judge of probate, and I missed them. So I'm going to ask Jen to you, why don't you tell me, Jen, what you learned from the judge of probate today. Well, I learned that the judge of probate is a lot different than the judges you see on TV and stuff because, like, he doesn't just make a ruling and that's over with it. He actually, like, talks to the people and um, communicates with them mm -hmm. more than um, the other judges. Like more of a cuddler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he told me that the probate judge is more, like, informal also. He has a lot of jobs to do. It, it's uh, far more than that of a judge. He has to talk to families with uh, family problems, with children problems, children with family problems, yeah. <laughs> and so on. And and also, uh, if someone dies, he has yeah, to take care of the, like of the will and all those things. So there's a lot of things to do. And you'll talk about that today. Yeah. Well, that's great. What do, what do you think you might do about it, if, if anything, in the future? Um, well, I'm not sure what I'm going to be yet in the future. Yeah. But like in grade, I kind of decided I like being a judge. Yeah. But you know, like back then, I didn't really know what a judge did besides um, just like making decisions for people and stuff. And so I came to find out. And well, that's great. I think I learned a lot. Very good. Well, first you have to study law first. Yeah. But uh, that's that's a good profession too, being a lawyer. Well, thank you for your time, Jen. Sorry I didn't catch you with with the uh, judge, but uh, well, I'm glad that we got the chance to talk to you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye -bye.